This is All India Radio. Power of listening. Under the series, tonight we take you on a journey to the world of yet another magnificent facet of the traditional Indian knowledge systems. I am Manoj Mainkar. Ancient Indian agricultural systems. In today's episode, we shall be focusing on the ancient Indian knowledge of agricultural systems as revealed by the Vedic seers. The expert on the show is Dr. Sukumar Chattopadhyay, Indologist and Associate Professor, Department of Sanskrit, Banaras Hindu University. Stay tuned. At the very outset of creation, the Creator thinks about food, which is most essential for the sustenance of living being. As the primary requirement of being is food, Anna, man started to think for its production, because without production, consumption is impossible. Each and every country of this world has tried to enrich their agricultural system day by day, and following the motto of survival of the fittest, everybody tries to get the best profitable system. Indian people also have tried to get the best profitable system for the progressive and advancement in their agricultural system. It is most essential because about two-thirds of India's total population earns its livelihood from agriculture. It is the base of our rural economy. Hence, proper management of land, best quality of seeds, fertilizers, proper irrigation, modern harvesting method, etc., with the knowledge of updated advanced technology are most essential for the same. India has sufficient fertile land, Urvara Kshetra, well irrigated by rivers to provide the food of each and every living being of this country. Now, naturally question arises, what is the origin of the term agriculture? The term agriculture is originated from a combination of two Latin words, agar field and cultural cultivation or tilling, closely related with two Sanskrit terms, Kshetra or Bhumi and Karsana or Kristi. It should be known that in Vedic period the term Kristi was used as a synonym of Manusya, mostly in plural Kristaya, to denote people associated with cultivation as recorded in ancient Vedic dictionary named Nighantu. In agriculture, cultivable land is the base, Adhara, for food production. Since the basic need for the sustenance of human being is food, jivanti swadhaya anni namartaha, and for which a developed agricultural system is most essential, Vedic seers have also given top priority on agriculture, annang vai krisi. It means that food comes from agriculture. Since this speech is going to focus on ancient Indian agricultural system as revealed by Vedic seers, naturally, it is supported by a number of Vedic texts, especially from the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Athar Veda, Taitriya Sanghita, Kataka Sanghita, Maitrayani Sanghita, Shatapata Brahmana, Kausitaki Brahmana, Priyadarna Kupanishad, etc. Though it is known to us that previous system of agriculture cannot keep pace with the modern, advanced and smart agricultural system of tillage, sowing, fertilization, irrigation, and harvesting, but to enter with the kings on agriculture in the Rig Veda and Athara Veda and more than 200 Vedic references on land farming, plow with bulls, showing us seeds, different types of farmers, cornfield, different agricultural implements, irrigation, manures, preservation of crops in the granaries, etc. are sufficient to get a clear idea on the primitive concept of agriculture. The Satavata Brahmana gives a clear description on the major four stages of crop production, act of tilling or ploughing a land, karsana, sowing the seeds, vapana, third reaping or harvesting of ripened crop, lavana, and fourth threshing, mardana, of ripened crops to get the grains. Krishanta hasmai vapurve vapanta yanti lunanta apare mrananta sasradvai bhyo akrishta pachya eva ushadhaya pechire. 
her four verbal forms on different stages of cultivation should be marked krishanta for cultivation vapanta for surviving lunanta for reaping for cutting mrananta for threshing the rigveda advises for land farming as the best means of gaining wealth krishamit krishasva vitte ramasva bahumanyamana it means cultivate for agriculture be happy with the money getting from the same according to the atharvaveda the king prithuvainya a sion or descendant of vaivarsata manu invented cultivation and produced abundant crops people used to take these crops as the means of living for sustenance in life hence in ancient india cultivation of tillage was accepted by human being as the best rural profession and supported by mantra tan prithing vainavadho tan krishin cha sasyam cha adho ti krishin cha sasyam cha manushya upajivanti krist radhi upajivaniyo bhavati in the rigveda swings are also treated as the cultivator with the sowing of barley grain in the field by means of brick a plow yavam brikena aswina bapanti sham yavam brikena karsatha since in the ayurveda land or agricultural field is the primary need for the cultivation and it is the best place for sowing king ba bapanang mahat bhumi ra bapanang mahat it means the seer questions which is the best place for sowing the answer is cultivable land is the best place for sowing with the proper care of cultivable field farmers may produce good crops susasya krishish kridhi in the vedic period the duty of a king was also to look after the progress of agriculture krishraitva kshemayatva rayaitva porshayatva the twaitra sanghita also records the importance of cultivation and suggests properly for yielding good crops krishaitva susasya yoi annam krishir vrishtir vasat swaha etc a complete hymn of the atharvaveda also gives importance on krishi and for producing good harvest it records a prayer to king bhago to let the plow go deep the king bhago was also famous for cultivation as mentioned in the atharvaveda bhago no raja nikrishan tanatu the kathak sanghita also prescribes for deep plow to get the bumper production of paddy and barley adho durang khane adhava asya prithibya virijam virijas avikrudittai tasmat sukriste brihi java pachyanti tadima praja upajivanti it means by deep plowing the productive power of the field could be reached and farmers get rich production but according to modern agriculturists deep plow is not at all necessary for the production of good crops like paddy etc the same text also suggests for the production of rich crops from agriculture krishing susasyam utkridhi since rain water was most essential for agriculture in vedic period cloud was praised as personified deity in the maitrani sanghita tat krishir parjanyo devata agriculture depends not only on the water but also on all the five primal elements vedic seers may say about the fact that for the production of good crops all the five elements panch mahabhutas are most essential in different forms earth or land or soil is the basic need for sowing seeds water supplies the essential sap for growing the plants in the form of rainfall or irrigation from rivers tanks etc without heat tejas growth is impossible air is essential for fertility marus are praised as grinders of soil pipiswati without space crops cannot take shape so agriculture depends on all the five primal elements as a natural phenomena hence the satapata brahmana states sarva devatya vai krishi to denote the agricultural field or corn field the term kshetra is mostly used in the vedic literature the lord of field is known as kshetrasya pati or kshetrapati 
and the presiding deity of cornfield is praised in the Vedas for the production of good crops. Kshetrasya Pataye Namaha Different types of agricultural lands are mentioned in the Vedas. Corn filled with full of ripened crops, Pakvang Kshetrat Kamadugama Esha, Varen land, Pastureless land, Agabyuti Kshetram, Khilo or Khilya, that is a waste land, Khilega Vishthita Ivo, Urvara or fertile land, Apnas Vati Survara Suistani, etc. Indra is treated as a possessor of thousands of fertile lands. Tangna Sahasra Bharam Urvara Asam. The Rig Veda also records that due to the blazing of fire, fertile or productive land is changed in waste or cultivable land. Uta Khilya Urvara Anam Bhavadi. Different types of farmers are mentioned in the Vedas and they are named according to their works. For example, Karshivana, Cultivator, Kinasa, Farmer, Sirapati, Plowman, Bapa, Sarvar, Dhanyakrit, Sarvar of Paddy Seeds, and Edava, Carrier of Ripened Corns or Grains to a Granary, etc. The Vedic term Karshivana and Kinasa, the linguistic basis of the letter and current word Kisana, remind us the motto of Indian Agricultural Society, Jai Jawan, Jai Kishan. The author of Veda records a beautiful mantra on plow. Deva imang madhuna sangijatang yavang sarasatyam adhi panau avachar kriyashu indra asit sirapati satakratu kinasa asan marta sudana bah. It means that the gods ploughed a cornfield on the bank of the river Saraswati with sufficient water to produce barley, where the ploughman was Indra and the mighty Maruts are the cultivators who give such gifts. Karsivana or cultivators are also known as Annavid. Nikhananto Agri Karsivana Annavido. Farmers are also used to till the land with ox or bull for the production of sweet beverage. Swamina Nadvan Kilalang Kinasas Chavigachanti. For refreshment of field, a plowman is most essential. Irayati Kinasam. Seedsman of Savar of Petty Seeds is known as Dhanyakrit. Vapanto Bijam Ibadhanyakritaha. According to the Satavata Brahmana, Gandharvas were also cultivators, possessing we know and Bali. Gandharva Ashu Shurpang Yabaman Krishi Rudvalavan Dhanantaravan. In the Veda, ploughing is recorded as an auspicious mark of happiness, indicating prosperity. Suna, prosperity and seed of plough are two deified objects related with agriculture. Suna, Sira, Vivangva, Changajushre, Tham. Two mantras depict a real picture of tilling or ploughing a field with the bullocks happily by a farmer. Sunang Vaha, Sunang Naraha. Sunam Krasatur Langalam, Sunam Varatra Vadhyantam, Sunam Mastra Mudingaya. Though at present farmers are familiar to farway land with the tractors, but even five decades ago farmers were habituated to plow a farmland with the bullocks or buffaloes. All the agricultural objects like plow, ox, plowman, the binding rope, gourd, etc., are treated as the mark of prosperity. Again, as a symbol of prosperity, Suna and Siro are conjointly praised. Sunang na phalo vikrasantu bhooming, Sunang ki na shabhiyantu vahoi, Sunang parjanyo maduna payovi, Suna sira sunamasma sudhattam. Here, we find that the plowman is stealing the land happily with the serpent plow sayers and praying to cloud in singing mode for sufficient rain. The author of Veda records a beautiful mantra describing a well-shaped lance pointed and sharpened plow with a wooden handle. Langalang paviravat shushimang samasat saru. 
Due to the advancement or rapid progress of agriculture, at present three seasonal crops are producing by the farmers in many places of India, with an extra post kharif seasonal paddy known as boro from mid January to mid May. But mainly two agricultural seasons are noticed in the Vedas: kharif July to mid November, mainly paddy, and ravi November to mid March. Dvi Sangvatsarasa Sasyang Pachati. Generally, most of the agricultural crops take three months' time for complete production. Hence, at least four seasonal crops are mentioned in the Taitriya Sanghita. Yavam Grishmaya, Aushadhir Varshabhyo, Brihen Charade, Marshatilo Hemanta Shishirabhyam. These are the time of ripen crops as follows. Barley for summer. Medicinal herbs for the rainy season, paddy in autumn, and beans and sesame in winter. According to the Kausito Ki Brahmano, after one day of Chaitriya Mavasya, that is Chaitra Sukla Pratipada, the winter crops are ready for harvesting. In this context, agricultural implements of Vedic period may be mentioned in brief. Though we cannot compare the agricultural implements of modern, advanced, and scientific implements with the available implements of Vedic period of at least 5,000 years ago. But old and wooden plough with a serpent plough share for tilling the agricultural land with bullocks is still the base of remote and less advanced rural economy. To indicate a plough, following terms are used in the Rig Veda. Langala, Sira and Srila. The terms Phala and Stigo denote plowshare, which actually tills the cornfield for required soil. Sita means a furrow or trenched part of soil tilled by a plowshare. The term Isha means the plow stilt or the wooden sticks connected with the plow. Yuga means a yoke and Varatra denotes a rope for binding the bulls with the yoke and plow. Handle of a plow is known as Atsaru in the Vedas. For controlling the young oxen, two implements are used, Astra and Totra, to donate a god. Shrini and Datra, Sikri, are used for reaping the harvest. Lavana, Khanitra, Sovel, is also used in the Vedas for digging the soil. The Vedas record the use of Surpa for winnowing the corns like paddy, barley, etc. and titau for cleaning or sieving flour made of barley, etc. Sattumiva titauna punanta yatra dhira manasava jamakrata. To most uttered terms of Ajurveda, Sira and Laya are used conjointly for two functions, farrowing and harrowing respectively. Siran chame, layas chame. Now we may mention here some most essential knowledge of agriculture, especially on irrigation, fertilizers, prevention from natural calamities, etc., as revealed in the Vedas. Though the agriculture mainly depends on adequate rainfall, krishish chame, bristish chame, but as substitute, Vedic farmers take the help of man made irrigation system for watering the cornfield. The Rig Veda describes four types of irrigated water, rain from sky, divyaha, from oil, khanitrima, natural, swayangjaha, and from those rivers which are mixed with sea, samudra raha. Artificial irrigation could be guessed from the Vedic terms, khanitrima apaha. For irrigation from oil and Radham Kulya for irrigation from canal. For growing the yielding capacity, manures or fertilizers are used in the cornfield. Mostly cow dung is used as manure and it is turned to the Vedic seers as Karisha, Shakan, Shakrit, etc. They know that the use of adequate cow dung in a cornfield Rejects to a rich harvest, Kadushining, Palavating Swadham. 
नित्य पुष्टा कड़ी श्रेणी एटसेट्रा वेदिंग शेयर्स वेर ऑल्सो कन्सियस अबाउट द कंट्रोलिंग मेथड ऑफ नेचुरल कैलामिटीज द ऑथर ऑफ वेद रिकॉर्ड्स द इविल्स लाइक मोल्स रैट्स बर्ड्स इंसेक्ट्स एक्सेसिव रेन एंड ड्रॉट कुड डैमेज द क्रॉप्स द सेम कुड बी प्रिवेंटेड बाय सम स्पेल्स दैट इज मंत्र हतंग तरदंग समंकम आखुम अश्विना चिंतम तरद है पतंग है जभ्य हा उपक्वश In the Vedic period, farmers had no idea about the sudden natural calamities, as well as pesticides and insecticides like that of modern technology. Hence, they tried to drive the insect, etc., through the magic spell with the sound of a hay. In the process of crop production, harvesting is an important work, as if the farmer is unable to collect the ripened corns in appropriate time. he has to face a severe loss as mentioned in a mantra of rigveda yunakta sira bijuga tanuddham krite yanau vapate havijam giraj srushti sahara sanno nediyait shrannya pakvame yat it means the farmers plow the field scattered the good seeds on fertile land which is fed and watered by natural phenomena the ripe corns are cut or reaped by the farmers with cutters like sickle shrini etc to collect the harvest in granary through different process of threshing after reaping the ripe corn they bound into bundles parsha and beating out a thresh on the khalo that is threshing floor of granary khale na parshan pratihanni but at present indian farmers are more advanced with modern technology they are taking their reaping and threshing machines near the corn field and they are collecting only the ready packed grains like paddy etc in agriculture a farmer really gets happiness when he finds the production of ripe corns from five types of corn fields urvara फाटाइल इन बैरन लैंड शस्पीय मार्सी लैंड क्रिस्टपच्य कल्टिवेबल लैंड एंड अक्रिस्टपच्य अनप्लाउड लैंड एज मेन्शन इन द अथर्वेद अक्रिस्टपच्य अशने धान्य यजुर्वेद रेकॉर्ड ट्वेल्व टाइप्स ऑफ फूड ग्रेन्स इन ए मंत्र बृहायश्च मे यवाश्च मे मषाश्च मे तीलाश्च मे मुद्गाश्च मे खलवाश्च मे प्रियंगाश्च मे अणवाश्च मे क्षमकाश्च मे निवाराश्च मे गोधुमाश्च मे मसुराश्च मे यज्ञेन कल्पंता दीज ट्वेल टाइप्स ऑफ कॉर्न्स आर ब्रिहि पैडी यव वाली माश ए काइंड ऑफ बीन फेसिओलुस रेडिएटुस तील सीसेम मुद्ग ए काइंड ऑफ बीन फेसिओलुस मुंगो खल्व चिक्पी और पालसेस चनक प्रियंगु पैनिक सीड पैनिका मिटालिकम अनु मिलेट पैनिशियम मिलाशियम श्यामको ए काइंड ऑफ मिलेट पैनिकम फ्रोमेंटासियम निवार वाइल्ड राइस गोधुम व्हीट एंड मसूर ए काइंड ऑफ लेंटिल एरवम हिरसुटुम इट इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू नोट दैट मोस्ट ऑफ दिस कल्टीवेटेड ग्रेन्स आर नोन एज धान्य ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम द रूट धा to sustain in the bhyadarna kupanishad as all these grains are most essential for sustaining life according to this upanishad there are ten cultivated grains brihi rice yava valli tila sisem maso beans anu millet priyangu panic seeds godhuma wheat masura lentils khalwa pulses and khalwa kullwa which is scientifically known as dolichis biflorus lin dasha gramyani dhanyani bhavanti brihi yavas tila masha anu priyangavo godhumascha masurascha khalwascha khalakulascha in the vedic period preservation of food grains in granary 
was known to the people. The term khala is used in the Vedas for threshing floor and khalapa is a granary made of bamboo mats. The terms urdara, sthivi and kridara are used in the Vedas to denote granary or treasure house. For example, tam urdara na pranata yavena as a granary filled with barley. Nidega upe yavaviva sthivibhya it means as men bring barley from granaries. Again, Samiddha Anjan Kridaranga Matinam, which means decking the treasure house or prayers, etc. At the end, it may be said that this brief speech may be able to give an idea on the ancient Indian agricultural system, especially on Vedic period, as the base of rural economy. An in-depth study on the same may be able to explore new vistas and more information on the same even in this period of smart agriculture. Advancement of any work related with agriculture depends on the long experience with the knowledge of modern technology. But at the same time, we should not ignore our traditional knowledge on agriculture. Hence, the Vedic agricultural system should not be ignored as it is the pioneer knowledge system of modern India to provide adequate food to each and every people of this country. Ancient Indian Agricultural Systems You heard the 23rd episode of our all-new series on traditional Indian knowledge systems, Power of Listening. The expert on the show was Dr. Sukumar Chattopadhyay, Indologist and Associate Professor, Department of Sanskrit, Banaras Hindu University. We hope you enjoyed it. This series has been conceptualized by Shashi Shekhar Vempati, CEO Prasar Bharati and produced by Vinod Kumar. Special thanks to AIR Varanasi, Amol Parth and Randeer Thakur for their contributions. This episode is also available on our official YouTube channel, Akashwani AIR. Be there on the 11th of March, same time, same frequencies. This is Manoj Mainkar signing off from Delhi. Bye for now.